I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. I'm glad you could join us this week, and it's another great day to get into your technology. By the way, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. By the way, if you haven't gone to our blog lately, you should do that. Yes. Our blog, by the way, is drbill.cc. dot cc. I'll put it right here on the screen. CC, of course, for computer curmudgeon. You knew that. I tell you every week. I don't want you to forget. That would be bad. Okay, let's look at the very first item. Number one, Google Chrome 18 is out. Now, you know the thing about Google Chrome, you never know what number it is because it just installs automatically, automagically into your computer. I like that in a program. Don't ask me, do you want to update? Just update it. Because I'm always going to say yes. I'm a great believer in updatification. Yes. So anyway, Google Chrome 18 is out. I like to make up words. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it has been rolled out to the stable channel. It says the new version includes hardware accelerated rendering for the HTML5 canvas element on Windows and Mac OS X. As we have recently reported, standard-based web technologies provide an increasingly capable platform for game development. The major browser vendors are working to further increase the viability of open standards for browser-based gaming. Offloading canvas rendering to the GPU helps reduce the CPU load of 2D games and improves performance. So when you play your Angry Birds via Chrome, they'll now be faster and smoother thanks to using the GPU. How's that for cool. Yes. Whoa! The Geek Software of the Week drumroll. Is it just me or is it getting more intense? Maybe I'm just in a nervous mood. Anyway. Geek Software, Geek Software of the Week. This week is Free Undelete. Now, free is always good. I'm always for free. And you might say, why undelete? Because sometimes you delete something and you don't mean to and you go, oh, no, what do I do now? Stop. Just, I got some of your attention. Y'all went, what, what, what? <laughs> Just stop. Don't do anything. As a matter of fact, don't write anything to your hard drive if you can help it. Because it's still there when you undelete something, but it just marks the header as not being there, even though the rest of the file really is. So if you can restore that, the file will magically reappear. Yes. Now, prior to this accident having happened, because you see if you download and install the software you're writing over your hard drive, you might be writing over the file you want to undelete. That would be bad. So prior to you, you're losing anything, plan in advance that you're going to be an idiot. <laughs> Delete something you don't mean to. That was hard for me. I didn't mean to be hard. But come on. You know who you are out there. Anyway, Geek Software of the Week, free, undelete. Go to this URL that I have here, right here on the screen. And... Download the software and inst install it in your system, and then you're ready so that if you ever accidentally delete a file, then you can restore it with free file undelete. Free undelete is actually the name of it. Um, it restores deleted files, including those removed from the Windows Recycle Bin. So even after you clicked Recycle, uh, in case of accidental removal of files on NTFS 1 and 2, default for Windows Vista XP 2000 NT, also FAT32, FAT16, FAT12 file systems, this is the utility to help. 
so good. So that's good information. Speaking of deleting files you didn't mean to delete, you know the answer to this, don't you? You need to back up your data. Yes, that's also what we told Captain Picard in the movie when data was blasted out of the you know, ship into space and was destroyed against the Scimitar, which was the name of the ship run by the Romulan dude. Whatever. I don't remember his name, but I remember the Scimitar because it was a cool name for a ship. Anyway, so data was destroyed. So always back up your data. Actually, they did back up data. They backed him up to the B4 unit. Get it? B4? He was an early version of Data, so he was B4. Yeah, okay, anyway. The reason I say all that is today as I record this, this is Saturday, March the 31st, the day before April 1st. You might say it's April 1st Eve. <laughs> That's kind of odd. Anyway, April 1st Eve is World Backup Day. You didn't know that, did you? Neither did I, actually. But there is a World Backup Day 2012. And here's what they say. As we live an increasingly digital life, we can't afford to ignore the enormous amount of data that we create. We're well on track to make well over 1.8 zettabytes of data this year. That's almost 57 billion iPads or 210 billion movies worth. Dude, think about all the precious baby videos, financial documents, love letters, business emails, and wedding photos that you'd lose if it isn't backed up. Shock horror. So World Backup Day. So you should celebrate World Backup Day by backing up your files. It's a good idea to use something like Crash Plan. Matter of fact, if you go to my blog, the aforementioned drbill.cc, and you look over on the far right-hand column and scroll down that column, below the Dr. Bill's netcasts list, you will find, well, first you'll find a Mac Connection ad. They're having a spring sale, so that's good. But you'll find Crash Plan Automatic Online Backup. If you click that, it will take you to Crash Plan, which is the backup system that I use. I've subscribed to it and all the computers that I have. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> all the computers I have are backed up through Crash Plan to the cloud. Fluffiness. So, so I know that I'm safe. All my files are up there in the cloud safe and happy and floating around. It's a good thing. Anyway. So, I also have for you, no drum roll on this. Did you hear me drum roll? Okay, just checking. No drum roll, but we have a geek project. This geek project came because I got a phone call last night. A friend of mine, who even though through the years I have told him, look, just because you see the stupid little monkey running around on the bottom of the screen, don't click it. If you see the little wavy things jumping along, don't click them. If it says click here, click here, click here, the world will end if you don't click here. Don't click it. Don't, please, don't click it. He clicks it. Yeah. And he got massively infected again. I have to rebuild his computer like every six to eight months. I'm getting tired of it. I would set him up with Linux, except that he runs all Windows programs and he'd be even more lost than he is now if he had to figure out which ones he could and couldn't run. But, man. Anyway, I'm going to make an appointment to talk with him again and sit down with him and try to fix his computer. But anyway, he got me to thinking about a good geek project would be to fix your friend's computer. Yes. So here's... <laughs> you know you're going to have to. You're the resident geek, right? So, 
Here's what I say in the in the article I wrote here. So you would never have a massive virus or Trojan infection, but your clueless friend would. I was in a bit of a mood when I wrote this one last night, okay? Your clueless friend would. So be the hero. Clean their PC once it has been eaten. Yes. Here are the things you will need. Let's get our list of things we will need. You will need the program combo fix from bleepingcomputer.com. You gotta imagine that the people at bleepingcomputer.com have had these kinds of situations before, which is why they call their website bleepingcomputer.com. Anyway, combo fix, it comes highly recommended. So download that and get it ready. Also Kaspersky, hard to say, Kaspersky TDSS Killer. Yes, that is also an awesome program for finding Trojans on your computer. And then finally, Malware Bytes, Anti-Malware. I've talked about that before. Awesome program. Something you should have on your system and run regularly, even if you're not an idiot. <laughs> okay, do that. Now, here's what I say about it in the article. You will probably want to boot into safe mode before installing and running these tools, but by doing all these, chances are very good that you will save the day unless, unless you have a Trojan that has written a reinfector into the boot record of your hard drive in a hidden partition. They're getting very sneaky these days. Yes. And so what they're doing is they're writing code that even after you clean the computer, it has put a little record there in the boot record so that when your computer reboots, it goes, ha-ha, and jumps and eats your computer again and reinfects it. <sighs> Dude. Anyway, nasty stuff. So if that occurs, then you need to do a deep hard drive wipe and reformat and then reinstall Windows. In other words, you're done. You got to start over clean. Now here's what I say. Of course, all this assumes Windows because if they were running Linux, well, you wouldn't have to rescue them now, would you? Because they wouldn't get infected. Just saying. But if you do need to do a complete drive format and wipe, you can use Active Kill Disk, which is available here. Not surprisingly, killdisk.com. <laughs> you probably could have guessed that, but that is the case. So, geek project time. Go out and be a hero. Restore your friend's computer to speediness and get rid of their viri. Viri is my strange pluralization of viruses because no one should have to say viruses. Viri. Yes. Anyway, next item. Actually, before the do that we do the next item, let me tell you about our great sponsor, Citrix Systems. Yes. They have a program called Go to My PC with HD Faces. So that if you have, I point to my webcam over there on my computer. If you have a webcam like I do, which is a Logitech C910, really cool 16 by 9 aspect ratio HD webcam, webcam, then you can go to meetings with HD faces and enjoy the clarity and the crispness of a high-quality webcam connection across the interwebs. Yes! And you can collaborate and you can brainstorm and you can come up with ways to save the universe! Dude! So, this special offer with the bit.ly URL right there, that gives you 30 days free to try out, kick the tires, so to speak, of go to meeting with HD Faces. Dude! It's a great, great deal, so take advantage of it, okay? Okay, now, next item. 
perhaps the best Roku deal ever. Matter of fact, such a good deal that I made a special place for it here on the website over on the right hand column again. Big, kind of square, it's not quite square, more of a rectangle. But anyway, <laughs> best deal ever. $49.99 for a Roku box. Now, I say this not only just because it's an ad on the website, okay, but it's a Roku, dude. I'm big into Roku. I love my Roku box. As a matter of fact, I took advantage of this very special deal because the whole deal is not only do you get a Roku box for $49.99, but it's free shipping. Dude, free shipping. So it truly is totally $49.99. That's it. Okay? So I said that, man, that's such a good deal. I clicked through my own ad <laughs> and ordered one for myself, for my bedroom, so I could have roku -ness everywhere, including the bedroom back there, so I could go to bed watching my favorite tech shows. How cool is that? Anyway, so take advantage of it. You should go over and click on the ad and get yourself a Roku box. Dude, it's just it's the best deal ever. Okay, finally this week, Angry Birds in Space. See the angry bird and the silly pig? <laughs> Keeping Tuck's company there. Anyway, angry, angry Birds in Space. I just love that. Anyway, I've been playing it. It's a lot of fun. But come to find out, it's educational. What? Yes, educational. And here's what I say about that in the old article here. You can have fun and learn about physics. It reminds me of a bumper sticker I saw at NC State in the 70s. Physics are fun. <laughs> yes. Angry Birds in Space owes a lot to Isaac Newton. What? Yes. The legendary 17th century scientist defined the classical laws of gravity. After all, and without them, the game's designers would have had nothing to go on crafting how things move in its virtual world. Consequently, the game's heroic yet furious birds wouldn't be able to exact their high-impact revenge on those smug, evil green pigs. Without the laws of gravity to guide them, the pigs' Rube Goldberg-esque structures simply wouldn't come crashing down. The thing is, the game doesn't use real physics. <laughs> Who knew? Well, <laughs> to model how things move. That's according to Rhett Allain, an associate professor of physics at Southeastern Louisiana University. The latest version, Angry Birds Space, which escalates the avian porcine conflict to the final frontier. <laughs> Love that. Uses science that's even further from reality, he says. Allain says he took on figuring out the game's physics because it was a challenge. I think he was bored myself. <laughs> but anyway. Without ever contacting the game's publisher, Rovio, he wrote an extensive analysis on the physics of Angry Birds Space for Wired magazine. Wired, you know, is a website-ish magazine thing. Anyway, the question remains, why spend so much time analyzing a silly game? My goal, he said, is to use it as an educational tool. I love doing analysis for Angry Birds because it's a lot like real physics, but doesn't have the same answers. It's a lot like real physics, but it doesn't have the same answers? What? Anyway, this is why people do things with games. Because they're crazy. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, Angry Birds Space is fun. I enjoy it. Big fan of the Angry Birds. And maybe even the stupid, silly, green, smug pigs. They're very annoying. In a weird, funny way. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed the show this week. Remember, until next time. My finger just keeps traveling all over. <laughs> Remember until next time that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.